Welcome back everyone here for our next session. We have uh, how well do we know our bots? And uh, now let me leave uh, the floor to Yuki, who will introduce you the session and our speaker. Yes, hi everyone. Uh, it's a great pleasure to welcome Howard Feldman, who is the head of marketing and people at Synthesis, one of our partners for the developers conference. And Howard, I mean, reading through your bio, you seem to be really a colorful personality. Um, I'm seeing here News 24, columnist in a regular fashion, morning mayhem show, like three hours on Chai FM. What's going on? Tell us a little bit more about yourself. All right. So uh, um, I'm a, actually, it gets even worse. I'm a lawyer by profession, by trade, um, but uh, and I ran a commodity trading company for some years. But but I've always absolutely been drawn to to people. I love people. I love uh, traveling. I like understanding people. And I've always been a a student of human nature and uh, and uh, how things operate within within society. And uh, as a you know when I. Uh, I took a decision a couple of years ago to to move away from the normal conventional business and start looking at other areas. So, in fact, I wrote a, I've written a couple of books. I've written three books, and uh, I write weekly for News Twenty Four. I've got uh, a number of other publications that I write for, and I'm I'm on the radio every day. I've got a morning show. Um, from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. And then after that, I, I'm at Synthesis where I am the head of people and the head of marketing. Now, that in itself sounds a bit odd because what are people and marketing? But actually, it works so closely together. And uh, it was one was uh, looking at certain things uh, one day that, that one team called me and, and said, you know, we're trying to design a bot and, and we just battling around it. And uh, I just got drawn into this whole world because actually, Actually, it's a world of psychology. It's a world about hu of human behavior and human nature, which is so fascinating. You know, we always think of the the worlds of technology and the worlds of uh, of, of of human nature and feelings, and and we don't always bring them together the way we should. And uh, I started designing bots around looking at personalities, looking at what people are drawn to, and, uh, mm -hmm. and that's how I uh, land up here today. All right, great. So. Right. Let's see. You're you're gonna speak about personality in the technical mm -hmm. world. Is it more like giving bots some some kind of you know human character, some oddities, something like that? So it is and it isn't because ultimately, yes, that that is what we're going to be looking at. But at the same time, we need to make sure that we get buy-in from people. And how do we get buy-in is to be very, very transparent as to, to what who it is that they're talking to. And that's why I want to go through a little bit of a process. I want to talk about pet videos. I want to talk about animated movies and uh, and uh, have a look at what they have got to do with the world of bot. Right. Fantastic. I'm looking forward to it. Howard, please, Thank the you. stage is yours. All right. So uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Defcon and Mauritius, for giving me this opportunity. Very excited about it. If you had told me a couple of years ago that I would be speaking at Defcon, I would have said you're completely mad. Um, but in many ways, I feel like I've really now arrived that I could actually uh, present to Defcon. But I do ask you uh, to be gentle with me in the questions, not uh, not gentle at all uh, in terms of the psychology and human nature side of it. But I, I'm not an expert. I'm not a technologist expert but absolutely drawn to uh, to this world so what do pet videos animated movies and chatbots have in common that's uh, obviously what we are going to be looking at today just again, just to give you a quick overview, lawyer, I'm an author, a columnist, I'm a daily talk show host, and in fact, I study body language. I'm often uh, asked by um, the, the uh, TV uh, news network, Russia Today, to comment on, on world leaders. So that, uh, if, for example, Putin and Donald Trump are meeting, I'm the guy that they call in to break down that meeting and have a look at how things are going. So, for example, when Donald Trump was meeting Kim Jong-un, um, I could predict 
and I did on on the air that this this meeting was going to fall apart. Things weren't going well. So these are the types of things. And uh, as I said, I'm a non-techie. Uh, I am a little bit of a bot creator which I'm absolutely loving. I'm also head of people and marketing at Synthesis, and that for me is where all of this comes together. All right, so let's look at this. Let's start at the beginning. Why do we need bots? Why do we even bother with it? Because people have a very ambivalent relationship with bots. But we know that um, bots uh, improves efficiency, it reduces customer waiting time, and that's going to be a very important factor. Customers, we're going to see a little bit later, um, will abandon their cart, will abandon the, the anything that they're doing if they don't get the help that they need when they need it. It's, so it's, it saves costs. We're not putting people there. We're not having people manning our, our site um, 24 hours a day because we could have uh, the bots are there to be able to to answer many of these questions. It's an incredible amount of uh, it's it's an incredible tool for collection of data. Um, it provides real in time uh, real time information to customers. It allows us to scale because we don't we aren't limited by people, and it creates accountability. Why is that important? Is because we can have a look from a, from a a company perspective. You can look back at your your interaction and see what went wrong, was it a delivery issue, because people um, are able to, to connect um, and, and record that information. So there's many, many reasons why um, we need, why bots are very, very important. If done correctly, it builds customer loyalty. Why? Because I'm on a site, I can ask the questions, I can get my real-time information. It makes it that much easier to work with that uh, that environment. What is the downside? So, so I've I've looked at a series of studies. Um, most of them uh, uh, are done uh, in the United States. That seems to be the area of most of the research. The biggest issue around bots is mistrust. And uh, unfortunately, people that are experimenting are not doing us any favors. So there was a recent study where what they did was they created a speed dating site online, but they but but at least fifty percent of the respondents or the, uh, the the participants weren't real people. Um, in fact, they were they were bots. So uh, that was a um, that. Uh, that, that when people found out about it, obviously they were very, very angry. The worst part was they couldn't tell the difference. So uh, unfortunately, um, that that didn't lead to anything positive there. So we've got a we've got a mistrust of 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 uh, when we're communicating uh, because people feel as well they miss that human factor. And then as well, there's the studies that show that the more simple the questions the more um, people rely on bots and are happy to work with bots. In other words, where is my order, tracking order number, uh, where's, what's happening with delivery? Those are the questions that the bots, that people are comfortable with bots answering. As those questions become a little bit more complicated, so they, um, they, they now want to look to talk to a human. And that's, of course, a, a, a very important part. The other factor is when there is mistrust, what we've seen is that people test the bots. They want to know how is this robot real or is it a bot or is it a person? And we see a tremendous amount of, of, of that happening when there is mistrust. So just remember this, and we're going to come back to it in a short while. Of course, the well-known, the most well-known bots that we all relate to are Siri, Amazon Echo, Google Alexa, and, and again, we see a lot of that. People testing uh, Siri all the time to try and understand uh, if they can do something uh, weird and wonderful. So uh, we know bots are here. We know bots are, are part of our environment. We hear some useful stats that I thought are relevant to understanding why we need and how we need to um, implement bots. 83% of shoppers surveyed said that they needed some form of, uh, of support uh, during an online uh, during an online experience now that's a very very important factor uh, we know that people need help and it can even increase up to 90% while shoppers said uh, say they need help they don't always go for it. they don't always um, try and get the help 
And that's the problem because once once you you don't get the help that you need, even though you don't really try, at least 51% said that they'll either either try once or give up immediately um, before completing an online purchase. So that's a very, very important factor. And it's also interesting that if you look around the world, different countries have different almost tolerance levels. So in Germany, 57% uh, 57% will abandon their, their cart if they don't get help after one try. Uh, in the UK, it's 55%, Australia, 54%. And in Italy, obviously, uh, interesting, they're a persistent bunch. They, that drops down to 36%. So they will maybe try a little bit harder before abandoning their carts. Um, if they need help, uh, shoppers are prepared uh, uh, to uh, to persist for a little bit, um, but but after that 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 disappears. So so that's also very very important, and we need to bear that in mind because that means that a bot needs to be quickly accessible, answer questions effect effectively. Otherwise, there's a real significant tangible cost to any online environment. So here's the dilemma. We hate the idea of chatbots, but we need them and they're useful. How do we fix it? How do we find a way to marry these worlds together so that we can get the usefulness out of the bot, but also encourage people to use the bots? And this is where I think it gets very, very exciting. And I wanna talk about pet videos for just a moment. Now we all love pet videos, um, and 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 the question is why. We can watch. I mean, the most popular things on the internet are dog videos, cat videos, and and for some reason we we can't stop watching them. I can't stop watching them. Uh, and and let's look at this. Let's look at what 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 appeals to us about them. We know that dogs, their pets aren't human, but we identify with them. We connect to them. And very importantly, we impose our own emotions on them. That is going to be a key factor with how we deal with bots. There's a word for that. It's called anthropomorphism. And it's a horrible word um, and hard to remember. But the idea of it is very, very significant. We do this all the time. Um, Anthropomorphism is when we impose our feelings, our emotions, our values on a pet, on, 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 on an animal. And, uh, and this, this to me is, is, is when researching it, uh, I mean, this, I haven't seen it written anywhere, but, but it's an idea that I came, came, across, uh, came up with because I think that it answers a lot of our bot questions. Let's put the animals aside and let's talk about animation. So in the beginning, so let's say in the 1930s, um, when, when we started to produce a lot of our animated movies, they were never based on a person. They were always based on a the idea of a the imagination of the person who was the cartoonist. So somebody would sit in a in a in a studio and they would design somebody that would look like Snow White, and and that became the characters, and that stays fairly constant throughout the the, the 20th century. But by later on, we start to see a shift. And what is that shift is where we see real actors with their voices and their personality traits, maybe their look, their something about them gets imposed in our world of animation. Now, why is that significant is because what that does, obviously, is it, 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 it makes them box office hits. But why? Because we can identify with them. We, we laugh at Eddie Murphy playing the donkey in Shrek because the donkey takes on the personality of, the, of comedian Eddie Murphy. And we all relate to it. It's his voice, it's his style, it's his personality. And, and we, we absolutely love that. Nobody thinks that Eddie Murphy is a donkey or is playing the role of a donkey, but somehow we get, we get drawn in to this world. So the lines become Blurred. And we understand that although he is not a donkey, there's this blurring of reality. Hollywood moves in this direction to enable us 
to identify with the characters that they are starting to put out. And that is very interesting. Um, th those are two points now, the, the, the pet videos and the Hollywood approach that I believe um, have the key to what the answer is to creating a perfect, not, so, not, that, not that there's such a thing as perfect bot, but, uh, but a bot that is, that is powerful for us. So why am I telling you this? And now you need to follow me. We know that people don't like to be tricked. I've told you that already. All of our research says that. If they think they're going to be tricked, they're going to test you and test you and test your bot until they find out if they're being tricked or not. When people are comfortable that they're not me being misled because they know in a pet video that a dog is not human, then they can relax. Once they've done this, then they can identify w and feel what that bot is feeling, even though the bot isn't feeling, it's what they're feeling. They're imposing their feelings on a bot, okay? We also like familiarity. We like to be, um, we like to connect with something that is a voice that we know. Now, a voice doesn't necessarily need to be audio, but also it's a style. And we're gonna use that when we start to look at the communication style or type um, of communication that we are going to use when we design our bot. So where do we go wrong? Sometimes people either don't know that a chat bot is real, they're distrustful, and um, they, they need to, to um, the, the distrust leads to all sorts of problems. So here's the irony. By disclosing that a bot is a bot, we make it more relatable and therefore more human. Let me say that again. By disclosing that a bot is, is a bot and not human, we make that bot more relatable. And that's a mistake that people make, is they try to very often create a bot that, that seems human, but in fact isn't, and, and therefore that makes it non-human. By disclosing that it is um, non-human, we make it relatable. Then, because once we know that, then once we've disclosed it, then we can now create a history, a personality, a style that people can expect from a real person. That's the irony on it. An image of the chatbot and link uh, to his bio, to the, to the bot's bio, completes the whole irony of the approach. So what I like to do is create a little bit of a history. Who is this person? What the, the bot? Uh, I'm, I'm telling you that it's not real but in fact got a, a whole history. So when, when I was looking at this, creating the synthesis bot, I started to look at what, what this person would seem to be like. And his name happens to be Alex. This is a picture of Alex. When you pop onto the synthesis website, that's what you will, you will see. Hi, he says, I'm, uh, I'm Alex. Alex says, hi, I'd love to be of assistance. I'm new at this. I'm learning all the time. If you want to read more about me, let me know. Otherwise, let's get to it. So Alex discloses that he is a bot. He says, Duck, please just be gentle with me. Um, some, and, and, and here we go. He says, uh, thanks for that. What is your company name? We'll get to the contents in a moment. I just need some information. Let me know what you're looking for. And, and, and so he goes, but he discloses very, very quickly that he's a bot. And uh, if you want more information, then you can get it from him. So what we did when we were looking to create this bot is, is uh, we tried to make sure that, um, that he had a bit of a job description. So here we go in terms of that. We said, what is, what is Alex's job? Well, he's website frontline support. That's what he does. His job is to answer basic questions on rates and the kinds of projects, answer basic questions on experience and skills, and to facilitate the communication and direct to the correct vision. So what we were trying to, to achieve here is be very, very clear 
as to what Alex's job description is. Because very often, we don't even think about that. We put the bot on, we have, answer, we have them answering the frequently asked questions, but in fact, we don't really know what does and doesn't fall within the scope. The way in which I approached it, or we wanted to approach it, was to give create a job description around that expectation. We also created a history. So Alex is actually not a particularly uh, personable guy, unfortunately. Um, if he had friends, I would call him Al, but he doesn't have friends. He is, he's, he's a bit of, he's socially awkward. A brief, uh, brief history, born too smart for his own good. Alex has always had the gift of being able to quickly understand how things operate. His love for innovation caused his parents immeasurable frustration, but made him the go-to guy for all things technical at family get-togethers. That's our Alex. He's just not he's not personable but he's quite techy he's very very eager to help um and uh, and he lives by the motto face every day with the confidence of a four-year-old in a batman cape that's alex's uh, that's alex's motto and yes i see you can relate to that so that's cool um uh, his medical history mostly alex is healthy aside from a narrow brush with mortality from a deep vein thrombosis caused by 16 hours of non-stop gaming his language style although he can be a little co condescending at times alex does try to help um, and is quick to acknowledge when he's out of his depth he's intuitive and he is eager to assist. That's Alex. Now that we know who he is, we, we understand his language. We understand how he's going to communicate. We know what his job is. We've created a little uh, avatar of what he looks like. And uh, we know how to, um, we know um, that you know, he can be a bit condescending. He's not particularly a, a particularly, um, you know, a, a much of a people's person, but he really does try and help. I think he would be an excellent buddy here in the Batcave. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> so there we go. And, and that's the point, is immediately you can relate to him. You know he's not real, but he's got a history upon you. This is this is who he is, and and his his conversational style is going to um, reflect all of that. So here he says, "Hi, I'm Alex. I'm the synthesis chatbot. I would love to be of assistance. I'm new at this, but I'm learning all the time. And why is that important? Obviously, because through machine learning, through um, through uh, with a little bit of assistance of AI." data, he's going to get better at what he does, but he discloses fully that, uh, that he isn't perfect. And by doing that, what that does is the person who's now um, corresponding with him doesn't want to test him because human nature says he's made himself vulnerable, Alex. He says, I'm new at this, you know, I, I'm learning, but I kind of just be gentle with me. And even though we know that Alex is a chatbot, in our minds, we the shift is by making himself just that little bit vulnerable, he makes himself human. And that's, of course, the irony in, in the whole thing. Right. So now you understand the my approach to, 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 to bots. Let's look at, um, and, and many of you, you participating in the session today, uh, will be from different environments. Um, the important questions are as follows. What is my bot, our bot to be used for? What are our brand guidelines? And who is our ideal customer? So if we a, uh, if we the tax authority, uh, we are um, the brand guidelines, it's, it's going to be quite governmental, it's going to be informative, perhaps a bit more formal. Um, what is it used for? It's used to communicate um, um, uh, citizen information to them, etc. And the ideal customer, okay, it's quite broad, but it's people that are filling in tax returns and maybe need um, some, some assistance along the way. Um, if you're a a spare parts car, uh, a, a car manufacturer, or, uh, you know, you, you're going to be saying, well, I'm going to provide information on deliveries of car parts, brand guidelines. Well, you know, I'm in the, in the, in, in the, the mechanical um, space, ideal customer, etc. And so you'd go. These are the questions you have to be able to answer before you start designing your bot. Once you've done that, then you could 
look at the different personality types. Friendly, funny, sarcastic, polite, helpful. Going back to the tax um, tax authorities, that would be polite. Certainly, it's not going to be sarcastic. Um, that and uh, it, you know, it, it, I mean, I think it would be quite funny if it was. And uh, perhaps if I was designing it, I, I I would do something just a little bit off the wall. But I would say, you know, and you'd have a combination of this. So uh, let's say going back to the tax authorities, you'd say maybe friendly, polite, and helpful. That's the that's that kind of an approach. If you are a a media space, maybe you'd be funny, sarcastic, etc. The younger you aim for, and there's there's quite a well known um, site, um, a bot in in the United States, which for for Planned Parenthood, there. So if if the bot asks you for some information and you don't answer it in time, you start to see it like falling. It just doesn't have. The patients for that. So, uh, so, so it it it, it depends on. Uh, it does depend on the environment. Um, you need to know what your environment. And again, back to your brand guidelines. That's very very important here. Opportunities to express personality um, through the greeting, humor, manners. Uh, manners are always important in sign off. So greetings. It's um, you know if it is again something a bit more formal, it'll say good day to you. How can I be of assistance? If it's a, say, you know, appealing to the youth, appealing to somebody different, um, it might say yo uh, instead of saying hello, for example. And again, now the advantage of this and the advantage of, 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 of looking at language styles is that, that if you have having people access your site from different environments, you could tweak the bot to be able to um, speak in a much more local or colonial type uh, colonial and uh, local or local so uh, they can they can be able to to, to respond more um, to, to the language style of of the local um, uh, participant so that's also important what type of greeting is humor appropriate now in many ways humor is dangerous um, I love humor it's my style gets me into trouble i promise you more often than it doesn't uh, people take things the wrong way it doesn't always work i like to be risky just a little bit but you might not want to be risky with your brand so that is something very important manners is always important the pleases the thank yous you're going to offend somebody no matter how casual you are if you um, if you don't the sign off is interesting as well because I know I'm somebody like that. If I've engaged with a bot, I will still say thanks, and that'll be that. I don't know why I ever thank a bot. I, I know they don't expect me to, but but somehow, we when we're participating in a conversation, we need um, we need closure to that conversation. So I don't feel good. Uh, just ending the conversation. That's my own need. And I think that many people actually are quite similar in that way, in that you need some form of closure. So sign off is also a good, a good way to, um, to, 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 uh, so here's a, some of the do's. Keep it simple. The more complicated you get with your chat, chatbot programming, the more opportunities there are for things to go wrong. Um, you, and start off smaller, start off slower in terms of the the um, the type of dialogue. You'll you'll start to see what type of questions, and that's why that data is so important. Uh, think in terms of if, then. So when pro programming a chatbot, you need to think like an engineer. I, I, I probably don't need to tell this audience that today. Uh, you could probably tell me that, but but it's 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 the if. Then, so if they ask the question, what is the answer? Where where can the conversation go, etc.? Make your chatbot conversational. No one wants to feel like they're having a conversation with a robot, even though they know they are. And again, that's back to this whole irony. Uh, use chatbots as a supplement to human conversations, but never as a replacement. And I think that's part of a company culture more than it is simply about the chatbot. When you input, when you're putting a chatbot um, when you in 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 place, understand that it has limited use. Do not think that you're going to be doing away with human interaction. If you do that, you are making a tremendous, tremendous mistake. And also make sure that at any moment, at any time during that conversation, a person can opt to have a real person contact them.
Again, that's the beauty of disclosing that it's a chatbot. There's no expectation other than saying, I'm going to try and help you. If I can't, I'm going to get a real human to give you a call or to email you or to contact you because we really do want to be of assistant. So that kind of transparency is exactly the thing that will provide the, 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 um, uh, the, the confidence for people to, um, to, to, to engage with you. If at first you don't succeed, try again. I hate the cliche, but it's absolutely right. Chatbots are a brand new technology, like any brand new technology. It's going to take time um, to get it right. And every company is going to have a different experience, depending again, who their market is, who their, their, their brand and what their brand is, the conversational styles, etc. And very, very important, as I've said a number of times, um, define the bot personality and language style. That is absolutely critical, absolutely critical to understanding and um, to, to, to the success in this way. Most importantly, um, no repetition. When people get stuck in a loop, it is absolutely infuriating. And think about when you've made a phone call and it says, for account information, hit one. You hit one and then it asks you to hit two, then it's three, and then you're back at the main menu. You, you actually want to, uh, you, you want to destroy the brand, never mind um, not have loyalty to them. Be careful of the loop and just make sure that, um, that, that at any time you can access a real person. The other important thing is answering unrelated questions. It, it, people need information at the right time when they're asking that question, answering a, an inappropriate, providing an inappropriate answer to a question. All the research shows that that does huge, huge damage uh, to, to, to the brand. So summary and uh, conclusion is, is chatbots are here. They are going to be here for the foreseeable future, and we know that they work. We also know that people don't like to be fooled. It's not a good strategy ever to try and, uh, and uh, hide the fact that people are talking to a bot. A bot needs to reflect the personality of the company's culture. You need to understand what it is. But mostly, have fun with a bot. Let it reflect the personality of the company. Let it reflect the personality of the audience. You're going to get things wrong. And as long as you stay within certain guidelines and, and you do things with thought, uh, you'll, you'll say you'll change them. It's not the end of the world. But go into it understanding the psychology behind how people communicate um, and how they want to communicate and the fact that they want to feel for some sort of connection with the bot whilst knowing that it is not real, that it is really just simply a string of code. So I hope you found that, uh, I hope you found that interesting and, and just uh, that it provided a little bit of a perspective as to, as to how we function and how we could look to function with bots today. Yes, definitely. I mean, this was fantastic presentation. And I mean, there were so many, how would I say, um, aha moments where it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's obvious, it seems like. And well, it seems obvious because... No, because for most people not. But I mean, as a consumer, it's like you get frustrated if, if the response is not in a, in a... If the expectations of your uh, opposite are not said right. If it's like, you know, somebody tries to play you. And I totally can relate what you mentioned about the um, cultural difference based on the country. Because in my case, I'm raised in Germany. And, you know, it, it is the way how you get educated during your childhood, how you grow up in your environment. And then you have different uh, perception uh, of, of a response pattern. And quite frankly, yeah. on my side, it's like, okay, why should I waste my time if I'm not achieving it in, in the first place? Whereas, as you mentioned, in regards with Italy, that they are more tolerant. Well, I can relate with lots of sunshine, like here in Mauritius. They are more like easygoing, peace. Yeah. Let, me yeah. Try. Yeah. Let me try again. It can happen. You know, at a bad day. <laughs>
<laughs> so yeah, I can totally relate to that, and I mean, it was pretty impressive. Yeah. So you see, interestingly enough, uh, another project that uh, that we were involved with and that we designed was a, uh, a synthesis was involved with the the build of the technology for for a company called GovChat. And uh, using the AWS, a lot of the AWS technology, they built GovChat, which is really a um, a communication tool between South African citizens and mm-hmm. um, and government. So you could rate, you could, you know, you're driving past somewhere. There's a pothole in the road. You could set your location and just send it. And and there's this all this this interaction. When COVID nineteen um, started happening, GovChat became the uh, also one of the the areas where people could apply for grants. They could find out where a close testing station was, get their results, etc. And and we needed to create a personality around this. And uh, at that stage, a my co-host on on the morning show, um, her name is Zanati. And I said to her, "Would you mind if I took a little bit of your history, your kind of a vibe, uh, to create a bot? Uh, because I could picture exactly uh, that type of personality. She was um, on top of things, smart, quick." Um, helpful and and she said great and so we built this uh, the, we built the bot called Unati um, for for GovChat using a person as a, the a model for it and she became the symbol for what GovChat uh, the GovChat bot and how and how that became um, interactive for South African citizens and now millions upon millions of South African citizens are communicating with this chatbot. Called Lunati, who's actually based on my co-host named Zinati. Uh, so it's, it's just quite uh, it's, it's it's an amazing thing, and people know yep. that it's a chatbot, but but they can relate. Yep, fantastic. I mean, this is exactly where where it thinks that the success of, of an automated system of a bot um, can be found. That that really it's that the the the, the peripherals, the parameters are set up front. That there is this background story. I mean, I interrupted you early on about the Batcave with the Batcave, Batman cape. I mean, this makes it, as you said, relatable. Um, as a human being, you know what to expect or you, you change your level of perception in regardings to the response. And I would actually like to take one of the questions that came up uh, in the chat. Um, Adit is asking, uh, what are the maintenance considerations for these type of systems? So, so the, the off-the-shelf ones, and I, I can't talk to the technology again, uh, just to be clear, that's not my, uh, that's not my field. But the, the, the off-the-shelf ones can be tweaked. So you can, uh, it doesn't need to be too expensive because you really can mold it to um, to your own information, to, to, to your own style. And what you could do in order to save costs is create the background and the history and the personality that doesn't necessarily sit on the program. That's yes. just your communication. But behind the scenes, you need to know who that is. So that information can sit on your website. Um, uh, your, the history of, of Alex the bot, the personality, uh, job description, etc. That can sit on the website. It doesn't need to sit in the communication tool. So you could take all the off-the-shelf products and 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 tweak the language around that to suit the personality that sits elsewhere. I can't answer you about the actual cost. I don't have that. I don't have that knowledge at my fingertips. But you certainly can use um, what is available, relatively cheap. Right. Okay, then instead of covering with in regards to cost, where or what is your um, um, experience then in regards to, let's say, um, the time frame about, you know, going like from having the idea, having the starting point about, okay, we need um, a kind of bot system to um, help our company, uh, maybe as a help desk frontliner, uh, to actually get the system operational mm-hmm. and on the on the other side um, what is the maybe average um, time to spend per month on uh, tweaking maintenance and and, and improvements 
Right. So, so the way in which uh, the way in which we worked at, at at synthesis is is we decided we needed we we wanted to look at, at at experimenting with it. And again, I think that's the right that's the right way to go is to start off very very slowly. But we didn't start until we had done our own research. So that went off to marketing, and marketing sat down and said, right, what what represents the company and then we went through this whole exercise of looking at the personality uh, that can take as long as long as it takes um, but uh, and 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 uh, you know um, that that's uh, you know that doesn't take that that takes as quickly as as uh, as you're able to do that and then to implement one of the system any chat for example um, it, it doesn't take long it's it's actually very very quick it's not a it's not something that needs to take too long but you have to keep an eye on it and and if you're not yeah. monitoring exactly um, um, you know you could use uh, tars you could use uh, snapbot uh, snatchbot I mean, there, there are many and I think that a lot of them really do the same thing um, you, you know you can find what, what what works for the company but but it shouldn't take long it's actually not complicated what is difficult is making sure that your flow, your if-then scenarios are correct and, and that the right people are getting the right information. So what we've okay. done is to, we like to send it off to the right department that somebody will contact them. And, and, and again, careful how many questions you ask because people get tired of it. You know, what is your name? What is your company? What is your email? What is your cell phone? By the time you're finished, if you, you don't get the answer you need, you've actually left in a rage rather than than saying, um, you know, okay, let me just quickly fill these in because that's information we need. What we also employed on, this, uh, on the synthesis uh, bot was to say, um, I know these questions are irritating, just one more so I can make sure that I've got everything here for you. And again, then people are, oh, okay, fine. You know, we're, we're part of, it's part of a conversation. We're not pushing it yeah. to a point, we're just gathering data. Because that's the other thing. Remember, there's this mistrust factor. So the yeah. minute somebody is asked to say, hold on, why are you asking me all of this? All I want to know is where my uh, order is or or when you can get back to, you know, I need somebody from sales to contact me. Um, the, the, if, if I ask too much, I'm going to start feeling a bit irritated about it. So be careful of that because immediately they're going to start assuming that, that it's just about data collection. And you certainly don't want that. Um, you mentioned just something very interesting and I find also very important is about the constant monitoring and, and um, keeping an eye on your bot because um, seeing one of the uh, one or two recent examples where uh, an, an AI enabled bot was literally just running wild on Twitter. Um, it was an interesting observation that you know, starting from a from a friendly perspective, then uh, suddenly after a few hours, that same AI-driven bot was kind of extremely radical and you know offensive and had to be taken down. What's what's your point of view on on this kind of AI-driven self-learning uh, bot systems? So, are you sure it was a bot? Because that sounds like a regular day for me on Twitter. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Apart from the daily rage. <laughs> exactly. You start off having a normal conversation, we all rational, and then sort of for four interactions later, we're calling each other terrible names. Um, so, so you can't blame the bot for learning that, really, because that's how we interact. No, I think that I think it's absolutely critical to mm. to keep an eye. On, on the, you know, the, the whole AI part of it, the machine learning part, um, the, th that needs to be, that, that's got to be very, very, very carefully monitored because you really can um, do your brand tremendous damage if, if you aren't fully in control of this. And it, it goes to not only sort of out of control and being offensive, but again, things that, that you know, repetition of answers and going into a, a loop or a circle, that does your brand damage because then the perception is that this is what the brand is you know yeah. you phone a a company and you and you're on hold for 20 minutes 
you immediately think that you, this is not an efficient company. And no matter what they tell you, you're going to think that because your experience is one that says you're inefficient. So now if you have a bot that, that is answering inappropriate answers to the questions or they're in a loop or they're offensive in some way, that is going to do your brand tremendous damage. Take it down. Uh, take it down and, and start again. And that's what I'm saying, um, that that you, you will make this, everybody will, because, um, and, and sometimes it's hard to see. You know, we had this experience with the, the GovChat Bartunati where, where we'd answer a question um, and we realized we knew the context of what we were answering, but actually the the user didn't. And so therefore we had to flesh it out a little bit. And we saw people were getting irritated with it because they weren't getting that answer or they were getting the answer. They just didn't understand the answer. And it was fully our fault. We needed to explain it clearly and contextualize it. So you've got to almost look at it and you've got to test it. You've got to get people outside of your environment testing it uh, because otherwise you don't know what you don't know. We assume a context and, and we don't don't always know that, that, understand the level that, that other people have a context that we don't. And that's also very, very, uh, and, and a very designing of, 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 of the language style of a bot. Yeah, I think that that's the, goes again into this direction about uh, maybe regional or even country specific uh, constraints. Because, I mean, if you say you set up a bot in South Africa, um, there is a high probability, to my opinion, that it's not going to work in Mauritius or right. even then something like in Mozambique as a, as a neighboring country. And um, yeah. All right. Um, with that, let's let's conclude the talk. Um, Howard, thank you so much for this presentation. Um, I really like this human touch on bots, uh, the, the the aspect that things um, have to stay um, relatable, uh, that uh, you cannot just put a system out without having a background uh, uh, situation, a little bit of explanation, or if you try to fake something onto your audience, because actually, as you said, this is actually um, going to cause more damage than, than actually bringing you any benefit in the long run. And um, yeah, with that, thank you so much for, for being a, a speaker on, uh, at the Developers Conference. Um, also, thanks again towards Synthesis being a partner and sponsor for the event. Um, you might know 21 uh, is already coming up uh, with, the, with the physical conference here in Mauritius. Uh, Synthesis is automatically part of it uh, because literally here this virtual conference is like um, a little bit icing on the, on the top of the cake. Unfortunately, that with the pandemic, we had to uh, postpone our, our originally planned event in April. So depending on, on health situation, depending on border situation, it would be great maybe then next year around March to, to be able to hopefully welcome you in Mauritius and have a little bit more in-depth in conversation on, on bots and their personality. Absolutely. I would love that. Thanks, everybody. Thank you so much.